two things on this. I mean, I think uh, they really let the cat out of the bag in some ways when they said, uh, oh, oh, and by the way, uh, we've also got a problem with extremist rhetoric and all sorts of other bad things uh, on social media. So this will be a, actually a really good opportunity to be able to clamp down on that. Essentially, what they're saying is uh, we're going to clamp down on political speech. And so I think, you know, in some ways, uh, one of the cats in the bag was let out. And we've got, you know, Julie Inman Grant, E. Karen, who's uh, head of the uh, E-Safety Commission, and she, she actually goes around uh, censoring, for example, anti-trans ideology uh, tweets and things like that. Uh, there is definitely an appetite among many people in Canberra to censor political speech that they consider to be, and not just political speech, religious speech that they consider to be both dangerous and harmful. And that's one reason I am very, very skittish about granting government's powers to be able to say, ban social media or, or ban certain kinds of social media for, um, for minors. But the second thing I'll say is, look, I, I, I do, and look, I hope I'm not being naive, but I do tend to agree with those, and uh, Ben sort of alluded to this, that, that, that think that ultimately this is something that needs to fall mostly on the shoulders of parents. And an interesting thought experiment might be, let's say tomorrow, just imagine this, go with me here. Imagine that tomorrow it became legal for minors to uh, drink and for minors to smoke. Uh, would parents suddenly start allowing their children to drink and smoke? Now, some would. I, I will absolutely admit that. But I would wager that the overwhelming majority of parents would not allow their children to smoke and to drink. Why? Because they know it's not something that they should be doing. And the point I'm trying to make is, is that when parents sort of know that there are things that their kids shouldn't be doing, they can actually stop them from doing it. For, you know, for example, um, you know, uh, when I was young, and I think they're still legal, um, their BB guns were legal, but hardly any of my friends had them. Why? Because their parents wouldn't let them get them. And I guess the point I, I would want to make is, like, parents can exercise some control over what their kids do. And I think that we should be looking first and foremost at how to help parents uh, enforce rules about social media to their children rather than straight away looking to the state. Because as soon as we outsource our parenting to the state, uh, it'll start by treating children like children, but very quickly, like Julie Inman Grant, it will start teach treating all of us like children. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Just that. No, I'm with you. Parenting should be with the parents, not with the state. So I, I, I agree. People should be monitoring the children, what they have access to on the internet. It's a, a an issue that sta it starts at the home, actually, what, what the children are allowed to have access to. I'm with you, Steve. Keep it away from the state. Mm. Did you have something? No, I agree with everything you say. Yeah, I think, um, you know, just another point to note is with parental <coughs> controls, I tested out, um, I won't say which company, but a very reputable company's parental control system. I tested it out on a phone. I was able to bypass it quite easily. So for a kid, they're still going to be able to bypass it. What we need is to set up an app that parent could download, put on their child's phone. They can then log in and see or have a, a you are a, like a portal they can see you know, what their kid, get, what websites a kid goes to and all that sort of stuff. They can actually block Facebook completely if they really want to, um, but it's foolproof. The way you do it is it has to be a firewall on the device. You put, you put a firewall on there and it actually, in the firewall rules, it blocks certain websites. It doesn't matter what protocol they're using to try and get out of it. It's going to be filtered out, you know? So that's one of the things to consider. If they're punching out through a tunnel, then yeah, sure, it's going to, it's going to bypass the firewall, but that's, you know, you put in there by default that you can block... Um, you know, certain types of connections going out and all that sort of thing, mm. which would actually make it so the device is locked down and the kid can't bypass it. And what they would actually do is parents who are super busy, they don't have time to learn the tech, they don't have time to monitor what their kid is doing, but if they have an app they can put there that gives them peace of mind that no one's going to be able to contact the kid, they can't download and install a new app that could potentially open up predators to messaging them, all their SMSs get 
you know, um, overlay. So if they get a number that's not in their contacts, for example, it notifies the parent. Same with the phone call. You could even set it so it blocks SMS and blocks phone calls from unknown numbers that aren't in the contact list. Because mm. some parents are more like, only the family should be calling my kid. So that's the kind of things they could bring in. And it's in there. It cannot be removed as an app. And it basically locks down the device. Now, there's certain features that were in it, like being able to track the location for safety purposes and things like that. But I'm a little bit adamant to do that to children because of the simple fact, yes, it would massively um, help parents if they know, hey, my kid is, you know, off in the bush somewhere and it's a school day. Um, but I look, I think about the child's mental health, being watched, being monitored. You do not want to have a situation where a child is growing up in the world, big brother's watching me. I'm being mm. tracked. That's not what we want to do for our kids. But if you do it the way I said with the, um, you know, taking away the content, monitoring the content, so the child cannot bypass and cannot be exposed to the bad content, then that's going to be a, a huge gain for parents. But it's not invasive and going to ruin the kid's life or make them feel like they're mm. being watched. They'll actually feel like, hey, I'm being looked after, you know? Absolutely. What, what about a cultural shift in terms of seeing an iPhone as a kind of rite of passage in the same way that we do, say, alcohol, cigarettes, owning a car at the age of 18, right? rather than giving 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds, 15-year-olds iPhones, give them dumb phones, and the iPhone can be something. And, and this will just be hopefully something that sort of just weaves into the culture that you get when you're 18, mm. when you've got the kind of mental stamina to be able to withstand when, when someone mean tweets about you. Yeah. I mean, there, there needs to be a cultural shift about these things. As a historian, I know that in the 19th century, in some primary schools, kids were given beer. Uh, it was just a way to um, give them the calories that they needed for the day. Uh, but culture sort of shifted on, and now that, that is so, sort of impermissible. And you could maybe have the same kind of thing. Like we're in a culture where kids have iPhones, but culture can change if parents, you know, really are determined to drive that cultural change. Mm, I'm certainly with you there. I think, you know, w with alcohol, the introduction of that being one of the best things. To, to use as a case study, yeah. Um, with the Aboriginal communities, when they first came across alcohol, they couldn't get enough of it. They'd never been exposed to it. It wasn't in their genetics. You know, what would take um, many, many beers for Europeans to get um, drunk on, um, it, it took a lot, you know, it was it took a lot less for Aboriginal communities to get drunk on. Um, similarly, with social media, I fear, I fear for young men, and I'd have no problem talking about this. I once had a problem with um, pornography, just like uh, Graham.